These players need to be extended now. And how much will they go for? We'll discuss this and much more coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. But before we get into all that, we just wanted to say that 96% of you guys aren't subscribed. So make sure to go down below and smash that subscribe button if you're looking for a home for daily NHL content. Uh, and we just wanted to say we're two subscribers away from hitting our goal of 250. So make sure uh, if you're not subscribed to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to hit 250 uh, before the season starts. Uh, but with that said, let's get right into the first topic of this video, which is these teams need to lock these players up. And the first person we're going to talk about here is Elias Pedersen. Obviously, probably one of the biggest named uh, RFAs going into next season. Uh, last year, putting up 102 points in 80 games. Uh, and he's on a $7.3 million contract right now. So he's probably going to be looking for a little bit of a pay raise. I know, Mark, that the Vancouver Canucks are your second team uh, that you like to share for. So what do you th think about this whole Pedersen uh, ordeal? Well, I mean, you look at Pedersen, he's, in my opinion, by far and away the best Canucks player. 102-point uh, season's no joke for the type of player as well. And, you know, he's an elite center. He can score goals. He's a great playmaker. And I think it's not of the realm for him to maybe ask for a nine, nine and a half kind of range. I mean, if you see a guy like Nylander, everyone's kind of speculating him to get that nine, nine and a half range. I mean, you get more of an important position out of Pedersen. So it's just like, you know, Ajo took, what was it, 9.9? .9? I think, you know, nine and a half over six, seven, maybe even a five-year deal, I think it's the perfect ground for him. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, center is a hard position to come by in today's NHL. And when you got a good one uh, on your team, you want to make them stick around for as long as you can. But one thing that worries me about this uh, is uh, recently in an Elliot Freeman uh, interview, he said that he's in no rush to get it done. So it's kind of scary because I know Canucks fans are really worried. Is he, you know, only looking for a short-term deal or are they going to try to lock him up? But I, like I said, I think he's probably in the eight and a half, maybe nine million dollar range. I think we're going to see a lot more of these players take five year deals, just kind of like what Matthews did, and try to get the full like amount of money they can out of their contracts. So I'm I'm probably looking at him to probably get a nine nine million probably five year uh, contract for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. Like. You kind of see with the league slowly getting out of the COVID phase and the cap going up, you're going to see a lot of these, especially younger guys, take the three, four, five million dollar deals just because it's, or not million, but year deals because it's in the situation now where if the cap keeps shooting up, you're going to see players wanting more money. And obviously, if you go into your 28, 29 year old season, you can almost maximize how much you make of career earnings if the cap shoots up a bunch. So, yeah, I think a three, four, maybe five year deal, nine, nine and a half. I think it's perfect for both sides. You know, the Canucks get their number one center, their top power play guy, just kind of like the cornerstone of this franchise as they're trying to turn this new leaf and make it back to the playoffs. Yeah, I definitely agree. And like we said like in in the video about Matthews is that he's getting into his prime now, obviously. Uh, you know, just had that 102-point season. So you want to lock this guy up over his, uh, his prime years in, in Vancouver. And hopefully this team can get back to the winning ways and get back, you know, fighting for that, for that Stanley Cup final spot. Uh, and I think, you know, with the young core they have right now, I think – they will eventually get there. And I think P uh, Pedersen is the, you know, goal to get this team to where it needs to be. And I think, you know, if you lock them up, like you said, for like four or five years at $9 million, I think you can't ask for much more than that. And we're going to get into our, our second player we're going to talk about here, which is Rasmus Dahlin. And as we take a look at Dahlin's stats here, obviously has been one of the the better young defenseman in the league uh, over his time in Buffalo. Uh, you know, last year having the best season of his career, putting up 73 points and having a positive plus minus uh, for the first time in his career. Uh, he's uh, on a $6 million contract right now. I think that uh, Dahlin obviously has proven to be uh, one of the best young defensemen in the league at only 23, 23 years of age, sorry, putting up 73 points and just improving defensively. Uh, I think this Buffalo team has a really bright future, and I think it starts at Son and, this, uh, at Son and Dahlin to a long-term long deal. 
Yeah, no, definitely. When you look at Darlene, uh, he's one of the biggest bright spots Buffalo had over the past few years. You look at last season, they have, you know, improved a lot. A guy like Tage really stepped up big. But Darlene's almost that number one defenseman you can have on your team. He can play the power play, the penalty kill. He's almost just a game-changing defenseman. I know my cop-out answer has kind of been that $9 million range, but I think this is going to be another situation. You see a three-, four-year deal, maybe nine, nine and a half, and it's it just plays this game where, you know, you just got to try to maximize your earnings. It gives the team almost this four-year window with the cap going up. And, you know, the Buffalo Sabres are in this point where they're just flirting with the playoffs. And, you know, Dalian's a huge piece for that. So you kind of give them a little cap space with that $9 million contract and just kind of let them push, sign a few guys, and hope the cap skyrockets. Yeah, and the thing with Darlene is he's only going to get better. You know, he's only 23 years of age, and he's putting up 73 points right now. I think maybe in a couple years, once Buffalo develops, I think we could see him maybe pushing for a, for a Norris. I don't know if that's a bit of a reach or a bit of a hot take, but, but I'm really high on Darlene. I, I've liked him ever since he came into the league, and last year he improved improved uh, drastically on, on the defensive end and i think he's only going to get better and i think we're we're going to see a, probably a, a 100 point season season out of him in at one point in his career and i think you know buffalo needs to lock him up obviously like we said a lot of these players are probably going to take shorter term deals but i think if you can lock him up to an eight by eight i think this is a I'd be a really great deal for buffalo and like you said for a guy who can just go out there and play make like he does and now uh, getting that defensive edge to his game, I think that's going to be uh, really good for the Buffalo Sabres. And he's another player, like you said, that can quarterback a power play, no no problem. Yeah, no, those players are so valuable too. You know, it's hard to find a guy that's going to almost play every scenario for, you know, defensive end starts, offensive end starts, power play, penalty kill, bring the physical edge. And I think he's a great player for the playoffs. It's going to be exciting to see Buffalo finally get into the playoffs. I mean, you're going to see a lot of Leafs fans go down there, just kind of get cheap tickets if they ever do play the Leafs. But I think, you know, you lock him up, you just kind of build around him and Tage, and I think it's a bright future for the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, definitely, no doubt. And we're going to get into our, our next player here, who is Jeremy Swayman. Uh, obviously, Jeremy Sway Swayman just signed that uh, one-year uh, deal with uh, Boston this offseason, but he's still in RFA next year uh, looking to get extended. Uh, obviously, he's been he's played pretty well uh, in Boston. I think he'll probably become the number one goalie, only 24, 24 years of age. Sorry. Uh, last year, he put up 24 wins and 37 starts with a 920, and obviously, uh, he was a bit shadowed by uh, Allmark last year, but I think he, this guy's a really great goalie, and if he doesn't sign back in Boston, I think we might see him traded out of there, possibly, uh, but uh, he's going in now with a with a 3.475 uh, uh, this year. Uh, and obviously, Mark, like I said, he's looking to be extended next year, maybe to a longer term than just one year. Uh, what, do, what do you think about this whole Jer Jeremy Swayman uh, situation? I mean, you look at Boston right now, they have a two-headed monster between the pipes. It's, it's a situation where you have just two amazing goaltenders. And I think it's going to come down to who they trust more going into next season. I mean, you have to say, sign Swayman. You can trade him if you need to. But it almost feels like overkill to have a guy like Ulmerk and Swayman on the team, especially if this team goes into almost like a retooling phase. So I could see a situation where Swayman may get traded. Personally, I think Ulmerk will get traded and they'll kind of go with a younger goalie. You know, he established himself a bit more this year. But I think it really weighs heavily on the season. I mean, he's a guy, I don't know how many small-term deals he'll end up taking. I mean, you could sign him for another one year, five million, but it gets to the point where you knock him into his UFA, and then you get kind of tricky in the situation where he could walk for nothing. So it's kind of weird. I think whatever goalie plays the best this season is going to really determine on who Boston uses moving forward. And in my opinion, I think Swayman will outplay Allmark a little bit this year, which is hard to do when you have a Vesna winner and Allmark there. But... I think it's going to be, you know, a, a tandem for sure. And I think whoever wins the tandem is ultimately starting goaltender going into not this season, but next season for the Boston Bruins. Yeah, definitely. And I think this team is going to regress a little bit this year. Obviously, losing massive center depth with, with Bergeron and Krejci now gone. But like you said, it's definitely an interesting situation. Uh, like, you know, I think 
what they probably should do if it was me uh in my opinion i think they should trade old mark while the hype is high on him you know and get the maximum value you can obviously you got this young stud that's there that's ready to step up and ready to be a starter in the league and you know if you get rid of this if you get rid of old mark and just ride it out with swayman i think it's probably the best option but obviously they're gonna go ride with the two tandem because it worked for him this year so uh you never know what could happen obviously you know he's got almost 40 games last year which is almost half the season so you know if you ride you know with two goalies that you can trust i don't see uh, how it'll be a failure for this team at all especially like you said it's like a two-headed monster back there but one thing for me it's hard to come up with numbers for goalie contracts for me uh, i think uh, maybe if you sign Swayman to a three, four year extension, uh, I could probably see him if he has a good year this year, maybe getting six million, maybe if that's pushing it, maybe five and a half. Even a five by five would be great by Swayman. But obviously, we're going to have to see what Boston uh, is going to do because they're they're either going to have to trade one of these guys uh, or, or, you know, they're just going to have to let one of them go eventually. Yeah, no, that's the biggest thing. I think it ultimately comes down to where they are, how they perform this season between the goalies and the team. Because you don't want to be a team that's flirting with the playoffs and not making the playoffs and going to have so much money built up into two goalies. And with the hype you said with Allmark too, I mean, if he has a down year because Boston's not performing, you almost want to maximize his value and not just kind of ride it out for the sake of keeping him and losing just as much value as you can get. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. But we'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on this down in the comment section below. I know it's a little bit away, but it's always nice to, you know, uh, keep you guys up to date on what's happening around the league. And, you know, with Matthews now signed, there's some more guys that are looking uh, for contracts uh, going into uh, next season. Uh, so uh, we just like to hear your guys' thoughts on this down below. What do you think, you know, some of these players are worth? Do you think maybe some of these trade uh, players may be traded uh let us know but if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like down below make sure to hit that subscribe button we're trying to hit 250 subscribers before the season starts and like we said if two people if two of you people watching the video right now subscribe we hit our goal so make sure to go down there and hit that subscribe button but i've been casey alongside my co-host mark pie keep your stick on the ice